ranging from curry to cook sisters and sambals to sampan beans. South African cuisine offers a rainbow array of styles, colors and flavors. And this week's menu is a celebration of our cross-cultural heritage. Heritage Day is being celebrated in my kitchen and I'm going to tantalize your taste buds with some local favorites. When I think local, I'm thinking butter bean bunnies, chakalaka baked chicken and a caramel peppermint cake. It sounds pretty good, but actions speak louder than words. So let's get cooking. Starting out with the cake first. For that cake flour going into the mixing bowl. Next ingredient, sugar, butter. I'll just cut this into blocks and the butter is quite soft and get the beater going on a low speed. The ingredients start to look like fine breadcrumbs. Next ingredient, four teaspoons of baking powder and now gradually add the milk. This is a basic sponge cake, three eggs going in and a little vanilla essence. Heat the blender going on a low speed. It's important to keep it at a low speed so the cake texture remains soft and moist. The batter is smooth. That's ready. We've got three baking tins here. Get the batter into the tins. These are ready to go into the oven. Bake them off at 170 degrees Celsius for about 20 to 22 minutes. Let's start with the chaka like a chicken. Every family, every region has their own recipe and I'm going to share my special recipe with you. First ingredient going into the pan, some sunflower oil, just a little slick. Now the chicken goes in, skin side down. You could also put the chicken directly into the chaka like a sauce. I prefer sealing them first and getting a lovely golden brown colour on the skin. Flip the chicken pieces over and it's best to leave the chicken to brown first before you do this. It prevents the skin from tearing and falling off and that looks perfect. Once you've turned all the chicken pieces, leave it to cook for about another minute and then remove them from the pan. Let's get started on the chakalaka sauce. First ingredient, onions going in. Season the onion with a light sprinkling of salt. Stir the onion into the oil and it's the moisture from the onion that loosens the brown bit stuck to the pan. And that's where the flavor is. Chakalaka can be served with bread, with samp, or even stews. It's a great accompaniment. The onions have softened. Yellow peppers going in next. And some red peppers too. Carrots. I've grated these carrots. Ginger and garlic paste. I want the peppers and the carrots to caramelize. So cook it down until the moisture evaporates and fry it off in that flavored oil. The carrots have cooked down, the oil separated and it's been frying in this lovely flavored oil. I'm using some green chili and some fresh thyme. I've slit these in halves. Those go into the side of the pan. Now for my very own touch, I've got some red chili powder. Quick stir through, and then tomatoes. To the tomato, add some cumin, coriander, and garam masala. Give that a stir, and use the back of a spoon to break down the lumps in the tomato. One of my secret ingredients, mango chutney. I make up large batches once a year and I store it in sterilized jars. We've got some stock. Mayonnaise. I'm just using store-bought mayonnaise for this. And fresh cream. Gently work those ingredients together. That's our creamy chakalaka cooking sauce done. Pop the chicken pieces back into the sauce and I'm placing them skin side facing upward again. Then use the wooden spoon to lightly coat the pieces in that sauce. The chicken's ready for the oven and the cakes should also be ready. Let's have a look. They are, they're golden brown and they've pulled away from the sides of the pan. That's the last one. Turn up the oven to 180 degrees Celsius and the chicken's going to cook for about 60 minutes. 
My next dish is a Durban specialty, the much-loved bunny chow. And although it originated in Durban, it's loved all through South Africa. I'm starting out with the butter bean filling for that. I've got sunflower oil going into the pan. And to that, my whole spices, a bay leaf and cinnamon stick, some mustard seeds, and those start to pop as soon as they hit the oil, and then some cumin. Cumin works really well in that bean filling, but take care not to add too much. It can be quite overpowering. Next, add the onion. Season this with salt. And saute until the onion's light golden brown. To the onion, some green chilli and garlic. Next, some red chilli powder, about two teaspoons. Another quick stir and add the potatoes. You can add the potatoes with the water to stop the chilli from burning. To this, a touch of coriander, a of garam masala and some turmeric. Pour in some boiled water. You can cook sugar bean curry or chickpeas in exactly the same way. For me, the most special thing about a bunny chow are the potatoes. They soak up those curry flavours and there's something quite satisfying about squishing those potatoes down with a bit of bread. It takes me back to my childhood in Durban. Reduce the heat, cover the pan with a tight-fitting lid and leave that to simmer until the potatoes are tender. In the meantime, I'm going to finish the cake. The cakes have cooled down and they're still quite springy to the touch. And when you press down with your finger, they should spring back. That's how you know the cakes are properly cooked. For the filling, we've got some caramel filling here, some fresh cream and some minted chocolate. First, some caramel going on top of the sponge cake. Use a spatula and spread that over. You can transform any ordinary sponge cake into a delicious treat using some caramel and fresh cream. Next, fresh cream, and I love fresh cream. Spoon that over. You can use the same spatula just to spread that around. Oh, this looks delicious. Touch chocolate. And the next layer going on top. More caramel. You could use chocolate cake for this and some hazelnut chocolate sprinkles instead. Play around with the recipe. More cream, gently work that over. From the center going outward, chocolate. The last layer now, place it upside down over the top. Scrape the remaining caramel over the cake. Once again, gently work that over. Fresh cream as well. Swirl the cream and the caramel together. And lastly, some sprinkles going on top as well. That's our dessert done. The potatoes should be tender. Let's finish up on the bean bunnies. Those potatoes look quite mushy and soft. Next ingredient, tomatoes. Give that a stir and some butter beans. You can use tinned butter beans or boiled beans for this recipe. Add some curry leaves. Simmer that for a few minutes until the gravy thickens slightly. The gravy simmered down. We're ready to serve this. You could use store-bought bread, but I'm really lucky to have a friend who makes batches of fresh bread daily, and she's brought me these rolls. Scoop the curry into the hollowed out bread. Garnish with some coriander. And the next one. Coriander. Top going on. Going to serve this with some carrot salad. Time to enjoy the feast. One of the ways we can teach our children about our heritage is through food, and I encourage you to get cooking. Bunny chow originated as a way to transport curry while away at work. 
The bread was hollowed out and filled with steaming hot curry and then wrapped in yesterday's newspaper. Today it's enjoyed on plates. Chakalaka originated in the townships and it's much loved by all South Africans. For dessert, the peppermint ace custard gets a remake. We've got layers of sponge cake sandwiched together with caramel and whipped cream. Topped with minty chocolate, it's hard to resist. I hope I've tantalized your taste buds and inspired you to cook your very own proudly South African feast.